Thank you, Margaret. Okay, and I'm gonna just mute. I'm gonna mute people. Feel free at any point to unmute yourself, but I keep everyone. And Wendy, if you can keep people un, uh, muted when they're not talking, just so we won't have background noise. But anyone at any point, feel free to unmute and ask questions. Okay, Sunday, September 11th, writing on circles and curves, that's on the website. It should be a fun, really fun session. It's I think three hours, yeah, one to four. And then on September 23rd, Cindy Lantier has stepped up and she's going to do monoline italic study group. She's new to italic, she's been practicing and monoline is fairly simple. So she's gonna lead that. But what our thing with study group is it doesn't have to be the leader doing everything. People can share tips and tricks. And, but Cindy has prepared a few things to demo. So this is based on Nina Tran's workshop she did for us, but if others want to join us and if they have handouts, because we're not going to provide Nina's handouts, but if you have your own handouts, feel free to join us and participate. Our goal now is we have workshops. We want to build on that, reinforce what we learn. And we many of us have studied italic before. So we want to just keep reinforcing what we're learning so that we don't take a workshop, move on and never truly learn it, never master it. Okay, October 6th and 7th and 8th and 9th are in-person workshops with Elmo von Slingerland from Holland, from the Netherlands. So I want to mention that just for the locals, if the in-person workshops are not filling that well, so there's plenty of room. If anyone's out in um, the Inland Empire, we can always carpool. These workshops are held in Los Angeles. Two are on a weekday, Thursday, Friday, and the others are um, Saturday, Sunday. So October 6th, 7th, 8th, and 9th. And then in October, Friday evening, starting October 14th, Mark Van Stone, he is a scholar of ancient letter forms, and he is going to start uh, teach on Friday evenings for four sessions, versals and decorating versals. I've heard people say he's the, the one of the best teachers they've ever had. So um, it's it's a great opportunity, and we spread it out so we have time to work on it in between and really learn. Okay. And with that, I'm. that's all the announcements I have. I'm going to turn it over to Sharon. And you know what, Sharon, I'm going to make you a co-host because only hosts can share. So just a minute. Okay, you're a co-host now if you want to try sharing your screen. Okay. Oh, I have to grant access. Sorry, just a second yeah. here. Sure. Privacy is not happy. Um, I've never had to do that before. Okay. Hi. Oh, it says um, I have to quit and reopen? Uh, well, I'm going to try it. Okay. Can you can you see now? No. Have you shared your screen? You know what? Yeah. There. Can see now. We can see your Zoom screen, but you need to be on your. Uh, before yeah. you share, you need to be on your what you're going to share. I, and I was on it. Okay. But, yeah, great. That looks. Can you see now? Yes, looks great. Okay. All right. So um, I'm going to share with you city by city a few places that I saw fun things in um, in Norway. 
So the first place that I want to share is in Bergen. And Bergen is part of the Hanseatic. It was part of the Hanseatic League, which was like in the 16 and 1700s, was like a trading group for Europeans so that they had greater security. Um, so anyway, um, they still have this beautiful set of buildings full of old, old stuff from the 16 and 1700s. This is a carved chair just to show you like how incredibly decorative and well-preserved it is. I just think it was, it was fantastic. I really loved it. Um, so they had all kinds of original lettering there and this was like painted on. Um, I think that this one is some of the rules for the, I don't, I don't remember the Norwegian word, but it was like cadets and they had like a six year old, a six year training period. And one of the tasks was that people had to learn to read and write. So these men had to learn to read and write um, and they had complex rules. And this is the rules. Um, this is another, I'm not sure if I'm going too fast or slow. So feel free to just like, tell me to slow down or hurry up. But um, I didn't see this type of lettering very much, just only in this one place. And if, if the cadets broke the rule, this was kind of as if it were like a chalkboard. So they used water soluble paint and they would, if they broke a rule, they had their names written down and I guess the monks would mete out punishment. And one of the things they had to do was learn how to write properly. And I noticed that <laughs> there was graffiti like this everywhere. They, they had, I guess they didn't have very many writing surfaces and they scratched it in the wood a lot. And a lot of the time they had these um, like funny lines that they would use to try to make it meet. Like right here, um, they didn't meet very well. So they they tried to scratch it in and the E, I don't know if you can see it, but they they didn't they didn't do too well. <laughs> it was just really fun to see how these young men had tried to learn their letters. And then I walked to the graveyard right near there and there's so much that's in, that's kind of in the gravestones. Like, I suppose that's true everywhere. Is that true everywhere? I'm gonna try to move this thing out of my way. Okay, um, so now I can zoom in a little bit. And I really enjoyed this particular lettering. And um, there's a lot of places where the, where it's so exact, I wondered how on earth did they ever do that? So Sharon, I wanna to mention to everyone, you might wanna pay attention to some of this stuff for the lettering we're doing tonight. Sharon was kind of pointing to the, a part of the stone and it's got a, it's one, two, three, four, fifth line down or third from the bottom. It's a V-A-E, it's the word at the end, but that E is on the back of the A and that's just fun stuff we can do with the lettering from Peter. So and the same thing with uh, line three has the AE here. And then look at the, there's like a little tail on this R here. Um, I thought it was just the stone, but actually it, it was a little tail. I think it looked like somebody slipped and they tried to make it decorative. It was really fun. Another really interesting thing was this particular gravestone. And I gotta keep moving this thing around. Um, but I, I thought it was so pretty. And it was so interesting how the moss had grown in the letters. So I took a bunch of more pictures of it close up. So, um, 
it's just fun to look at how the moss grew and highlighted things. Here's another one. I it looks like the same person did all of them, but I don't obviously don't know. But it did kind of make me think like I wonder if there are other applications that we could make modern um kind of lettering and make make it filled in with mosses or other things. My mind runs to like, oh, frosting. I wonder if we could like carve it in to some fondant. It's just fun to think about other non-traditional ways you can letter. Here's another part that I found really interesting. Look at that W. I'll, I'll zoom in so you can see it a little bit. <clears throat> I wonder if they did anything to encourage that growth of the moss. It's really a neat effect, especially thinking about the temporal aspect to, of all of us eventually over the big scope of time. It's, um, I live north of Seattle where it's damp and we have moss that tends to grow in every little depression and with the way the water collects, it, it grows there. And I, I think it's probably similar in Norway. So just voluntary. Uh-huh, just part of a normal climate. But if you, if you paint buttermilk and yogurt and then take a tiny bit of any kind of living moss, you could encourage it to grow. So you can actually letter with that with a brush and it will grow if you live where it's damp enough. And then this I found in the Hanseatic League, um, they, had, they had some plaques and it looks like a gravestone. I don't really know for sure but I loved this. Um, this is later. Um, this is 1634, I think. Um, and I've got some more close up. Am I going too fast or too slow? No, just right. Okay. Um, look at this part right here. Isn't that interesting? and how they've adjusted the slopes of the A so that it joins its neighbor differently. And then this bird, it's very badly done, but it's still so charming. <laughs> so here it is again. What do you think these things are here? I kind of thought maybe haystacks, mushrooms, I don't know. I, I know it's not right, but it reminds me of a broccoli stock. <laughs> it does. It's just really funny. Okay, here it is again for a closer up view. And um, since we're talking about italics, look at the shapes of the, these T's and the E. It's just really interesting and how there's this split on all the G's. And then the W's I noticed on this piece, all of them are done this way, like a pair of V's that are conjoined. And there it is under different lighting. And I thought this was so interesting. There is an art school there. And this was, this was part of the art school. I mean, it's too bad we can't read it, you know, but. You could also tell with this one that they they crowded some of their letters. So their letter forms like the O is not consistent. A lot of the width, the line width is different. So like, even like the M, it's really interesting. A lot of their E's are, um, they don't join. Like here, there's 
always a space. And I don't know about you, but like, I fell in love with this thing. Can you even imagine like how on earth anybody did that? And in um, all over Norway, a lot of their numbers are like split like this. It's so interesting. Does anybody know why they did that? I don't, I don't know, but I, I thought it was fascinating. Oh, this is really interesting. Again, this is from the Hanseatic League. And this says, um, it says this, this man was a councilman and an officer, and his name was Hans Nielsen Weinwich. And it was a 1706. Isn't that interesting? I love looking at that. Got it try to move this thing here so I can, okay, here we can zoom in. And it's so fun. Look at is these marks here, like it was as if they were like practicing before they actually, you know, they would have had to fire the glass. And it looks when you're actually there, it looks like this, this mend, mended part is original. It's not like it broke and they fixed it later. It's actually part of the original. Okay, so then I went on to a really small village and I met with friends and they took me all over and everywhere in this little valley on the fjord, I saw stone like monuments like this. And it was all hand hewn. So you get up closer and the lines on the side show where they chiseled it out. And then it's fascinating. Um, the lettering style is not consistent. It's just like whoever did it, you, you almost wonder like did all different people carve it and they couldn't really agree on what they wanted. But it says, um, this is about Hawken Hawkinson's um, Koningsdag, that means um, crown day, like the day he was crowned in this village of Geringer in 1906. And then this is a village called Rosendahl. And um, I, this is like a barony. So it's like a really, really wealthy guy. And this elderly man was sitting near this particular place. And he said, the, um, the person who built it was not a very nice guy and took up with one of the girls in the village and he was penniless. And so her father couldn't, hadn't been able to marry her off. So he offered to build this guy a big palace if he would marry the daughter. <laughs> so he built this big palace and then the guy was not faithful to her at all. So, but when you zoom in, I had several images of this, but I think I've lost them. Um, but the lettering is really, really cool. And it, does it look French to you? It, it looks like it has some French influence to it. It's, it's really, really old. Talks about somebody who died and their name was Rosencrantz. This would be really fun to like make your own alphabet based on this, wouldn't it? Um, I think it would be really fun. And observing the thicks and thins, it's kind of like a, I don't know. I don't even like know what hand that could be, but it's it's really interesting the way the flourishes go on the M and you can tell how it goes. It's made to look like it goes behind. And the person whoever did this, you can tell 
what's supposed to be behind and in front of. It would be really fun to play with that, I think. Anyway, this, um, this is in, um, uh, let's see. I've been to so many different places there, but um, Christian Sund, I think, and it's an old art school. And this was on the side in 1736. I'll try to zoom in a little bit. I thought it was fascinating. There's so many unusual kind of letters in this. Here's a different view of it. There's another different view, but look at this. The ooh sound, uh, the letter Y is totally different than the other letters around it. And this is Jacob, Jacob. Um, I think you can kind of see it here, maybe if I go down. Um, so yeah, there's the the I for the J. Sorry, my dogs. But it was obvious when you were there that somebody made a mistake in carving, and so <laughs> part of it was really deeply carved. The K was started originally over halfway to the right, and then they've moved it back and then this was an e but they've changed it to a e just think about that it's bad enough if you're working on paper but can you imagine if you were carving stone for a, an art school and you didn't have a spare piece and you made a mistake and you had to you know and all these years later you can look back this is like hundreds of years later you can look and you're like oh that poor carver <laughs> just there must be a story there anyway so that's that's just part of what i saw that i thought was so fascinating it's fun to travel isn't it and and look and see thanks I, very much sharon i made a couple little sketches while you were showing those to us so I'll if anybody going. wants any of them i'd be glad to share Great, so. thank you very much. So um, does anybody else have, so I'll go ahead and remove the spotlight. Does anyone else have anything they wanna share before we move on to our main topic? And we'll have sharing at the end too, so. Um, that was okay. really wonderful, Sharon, that was wonderful. Really interesting. So if you want to um, stop sharing your screen. I um, don't, I'm trying to figure out how to do that. Let's see. Hmm. Participants. Do you want me to do it? I can do it as co-host. Thank oh, you. Sure they did. There we go. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Sharon. Okay, so I'm going to just get on then with our topic. And I hope that Sharon's presentation gave you some ideas. I'm going to just really quickly go through a slideshow and um, just a few things to point out some letters of Peter's that we can learn from. And please, while we're going through them, feel free to sketch letters so you can keep the ideas. And what I do wanna say is, I'm gonna just open this. It's on my desktop. Um, uh, let me find this. I had started it. I'll start sharing and then we'll go ahead. Let me just find it. had this already I actually launched it before we got going so let me just find this a 
I'll just launch it again. Here it is. And then I'll share my screen. Uh, let me figure out how I can share. Okay. Is this gonna allow me to share? We'll find out. So I have this movie. Can you can you see that? Letters yeah. from Peter. Yes. Okay. Um, just a minute. I want to back up. Okay. So these are not, I sent you what Peter gave me permission and to use. These are, I'm going to show you things that I found on the internet. And I'm, I don't want to share them because I don't have permission to share them. I mean, I don't want to hand them out, but they're on the internet. Peter has posted them. So you can take screen prints or you can go out, you can Google. I did Peter Thornton and Adolf Berndt, I Googled, but you can also look at Peter's Facebook page and he's got a lot posted and his students post things and they had some great ideas. So this is to show you the kinds of things that are out there. Feel free to make sketches, but you'll also have the present, the stuff that Peter actually gave us and gave us permission to use. So these are just some, look at his versals where he's got the thick center on the S and, and just then thinner tops and bottoms and the A, the, the thick side and the thin side and how he does the crossbar with just a space. And he's got these extra little, um, serifs coming off just coming off sticking out on both these letters can you see my cursor i'm moving my cursor mm -hmm. around yeah so he's got these little serifs coming off of there i just thought those were so much fun okay then he gives us uh these letters i've got two pages of letters i guess they're out of order the a is on the other one but just sketches of letters. And these are out there posted on the internet. You can go get them and use them. But some of these letters, I just went through, I'll show you my sketchbook. I went through and tried to copy some of them. And what I realized is when I first copy them, they're very rigid. But when I start playing with them and trying to make them my own, they'll get more free. And I'll show you a couple samples. But that's what we want to be doing tonight is start sketching these. And I'll show you uh, what I did with mine. I hope I haven't misplaced them. They were all here when I started. Look at this T. Look at how he has the left side and then he has the right side going over it. This N, he's just got this coming off, the, the serif just coming off. The J. The bottom of it extends real far. And when, as I show you these, you're going to see a quote from Peter on what he, uh, his philosophy that helps him come up with all these very unique letters. And they're still readable. Now, there were a couple in here that I didn't think were so readable, but these are his thumbnails. And on this one, I think everything is readable. The S, the bottom of the S comes way over. Here's an X and a Y attached. It's, it's very readable. And his Z with just this serif coming off. And feel free to ask questions if you have any as we go along. Just a minute, it's, I'm trying to get this to move forward there. Um, okay, I don't know where my A went, but so here's some more just different thumbnails that he's done. And these are more squared off where the others were more rounded and you know, curved and free. He's got these a little more angular. So, and look at this P and then look at the D. It's like the same general shape and the S, the same general shapes are repeated. They're kind of triangular somewhat. And the B has those shapes too. And what, 
what we're really going for, I did one, I, I'll show it. I did a name on an envelope and maybe not every single one of the letters was from the same alphabet because I was just playing around, just starting to play with this, but you could come up with some really fun letters that all built on each other. Look at that Z. Now that one, in context, it would be readable, maybe not um, always readable by itself, but definitely in context. And then he wrote this word, a quote, and he's just got some neat letters in here. Look at that H. In context, it's readable. I had saw some other H's he did. I thought if they hadn't been in context, I wouldn't have known what they meant, but in context, definitely. And some of the H's, he put a little dot or a line down below that like a foot on it. So I, that helped. So he's got all these different things. Now this A is on the R forms the one side of it. The, the, um, the right stroke on the A forms the less left stroke on the R. I love that. Um, ligatures. And here's an E. This one is not one I would use, but here's the top of the E and there's the bottom of the E. So he's just really experimenting, playing around. And that's how you come up with what you want. You really push the envelope. And here's this little tail on the F, kind of like we see on Fracteur and some of the Gothic letters. He's added that to a, a Romans letter. And here's another one, the H and the E comes off of it. And his letters are a little bit squarish. I mean, they're curved, but they're a little, not exactly round. And you'll see that in many of the letters. So keeping in the same family. And I love this one. And this was on his Facebook page. And just, you know, look at that K, it comes through the stroke. There's that same D shape, but these all go together. And there's an O, and then he's made it into a Q and it just comes around as a loop. To me, those were so much fun. And he's got a slightly different decoration on the O, but it's the same general shape. And the W bounces, it's very lively. The X is very unique. So just, he plays and comes up with these fun, fun, very, oh, here. Here's this H with the foot on the bottom. That, but still, I find those a little hard to read, but in context, very readable. And I like them when they have the foot on there. I think it helps. But everybody will, and this is not Peter's, it's one of his students, and I can't even tell you. I found this on the internet, and I don't know whose piece it is. But what I wanted to show was the decorations. We were saying that we would look at Peter, Peter's Bert influence. He's got his simpler versions. Look at those decorations in the strokes. And then this, he attributed to Sherry Kiesel's colors. So I don't know if this is Sherry. Sherry learned from Peter and she does really, she's one of my favorites to study with, but she really doesn't teach much. But I just love this versal, the colors and the definition, the contrast. And what I wanted to point out on this was you can just put a box. You can do one of these letters. If you make it thicker, you can put a box around it, decorate it. It can be your first letter on an envelope or on a piece. You can, it doesn't have to be a formal Roman capital to do, uh, box it in. And then here's the last piece in this. This was just a little piece that Peter did, it's a formal piece, but he's got these whimsical letters in it. And they just, I love the shapes of these. And here's that H, but it's got a thin line coming down. To me, that's a little more readable. This probably was a progression. He probably started with that thin line and eventually started leaving it off. Here's an A, it's missing the bottom line, except it's got this little teeny spur there. 
So those give you some ideas of what Peter does with these. And then he just adds his small, regular Roman caps around it. And he's sprinkling them in among it. And this A has a little diamond for the crossbar. So these look on the internet, just tons of ideas. And these are so much fun to play with. I'm going to stop sharing and I'm going to put on my document camera. And let me spotlight. Okay, so let me bring this up. So what I did, I sent you the handouts that Peter gave to me. And I have to say, he gave these to me now, but he also, we talked and I have, let me turn this, turn this the proper way and maybe back up. I need to get farther away from this so that you can see more of what I've got going here. Let me get a little closer. I have all kinds of um, watercolor and other things on my table. So I had to work my camera in here. So um, these aren't, these I'll show you later, but these are the handouts that Peter gave us permission to share. And just, I love how he's got this little, let me see if I can zoom in maybe get in just a little closer and just this little tail coming up. And here's a V that he's actually added some boxes around to decorate it. It's not, uh, let me see if I can focus a little more. And then here's a Z with a box around it. So a lot of these letters have little boxes around them and maybe only partial box on them, but that's a great way to start. Maybe a name, uh, as we said on an envelope, a start a piece that you're making. And I do wanna uh, say that um, San Diego will have an exhibit. I think uh, it's next April. Wendy, please correct me if I'm wrong, but it starts next April. Right. And so you could be thinking about any of these workshops we have making pieces that you might want to put in the exhibit. And we'll have both in person and online exhibits. So you can enter either or both. But I love this R. It's got some decorations in here. Let me just bring that up a little closer. You can see how it's split here. And then he's just He's got it even split up here, a small amount and up here. And then he has diamonds there and he carries them over into the square. And then here's a W with some box, just decorative lines done with a pen. And then this great, which I'm not sure. I think that's an A, I'm not exactly sure, but I think it's an A. But great ideas for playing. And what I didn't talk about was, I, I meant to stop on one of his pieces he had. He talked about, don't be tied in with what you know about this letter. Let your mind wander. Just play around. It may be so far out. And in the end, you might not be happy with it. But it's inspiring. It, it can inspire you to do something else that you do like. If you just keep playing, drawing little sketches, it's much more likely you'll come up with something that you like in the end and it'll be unique and yours. So you could start with copying Peters and that's kind of what I did when I started playing with these, but then take it further and do your own thing with it. And that's when you'll really be happy with it and get free and not so rigid. So Peter gave me these versals also. He does, and really to me, these are kind of separate, but they're tied in, He because, Sherry, his wife, used to teach 
versals. And a lot of these are along the lines of the versals she taught. She was originally inspired by Peter, but she took things her own direction. And then Peter does some things that I think he was inspired by Sherry. So, but you can look and this letter, if you look at it in sketches, you'll see that it started out as one of those little thumbnail sketches. And you can take it to where it's only just a little box like this, or you can make it more formal and really just box it in. And Okay, this is, uh, here's another uh, handout that Peter gave us. And again, these are boxed in like the others, but some other letters, you can just look at the format. And do I have this one? <laughs> some of these I can't really, um, I'm not always sure. Some of his letters I can't always read like this one. What is that letter? I'd have to study that. I'm not sure what letter that is. It might be an A, not sure. That's an A. And so he's got all these variations, but you can just be inspired and do your own thing with that. Peter likes to do these little zigzags. And here's an S. And here the, the S itself is one color. And then he's got the decoration around it in a different color. An I. Or is that an I? Could it be an L? I think it's an I. It's an I because it's got a dot on it. So again, in context, you can read it. Here's a Z. And his serifs are the ones with the wide spaces. So those are to give you ideas. And then we have this one. Just here, here's another, well, I guess that's the same one. Same one, I just printed it uh, with the colors adjusted. And then the other thing I had was me playing around. I took a class with Peter and this was my original sketch. It's a little rigid, a little boring. I have the, let me see if I can get a little closer. I have the word going across here. So here's the layout. It's got a quote going down. And I, so it was class with Peter. I took it up to him and then he did a quick sketch on how I could change things. Like I had this letter leaning to the right. He suggested I lean it to the left away from the A. So then I redid it and I was much happier with this version. Wait. Christy, Christy, there was a question. Um, someone sure. wanted to know what size Peter worked in. Like, what was his original size when he did these letters? You know, they're all different, but he talked mm -hmm. about some of them are like two and a half inches. But I'll tell you, I took a class with him, and I had one, and I think it was actually this one. And I think it was just on a slightly bigger sheet of paper. So I, I would say it was maybe two and a half inches from top to bottom when he did this, but from top to bottom. So just a little bit bigger, he used a larger, this is eight and a half by 11. He used a um, larger piece of paper. Thanks. But these are thumbnails. This is him. These are demos from a class. So these just doing thumbnails, coming up with ideas. And that's what we wanna do. And then I wanna show you what I did for my practice on this. And I had all this out. I hope, here it is. I put things where I'll remember and then, then I'm. <laughs> so I started with sketches. So if you start looking at uh, if you do a Google of Peter's stuff, you will also think, see things by his students. And one of his students took a bunch of eye strokes and just decorated them. So I just copied a few or I modified them my own way in some cases, just to get me started with ideas. 
and then I started copying some of Peter's stuff and then started modifying it because mine didn't look as good as his. And but with time, I want to modify it, make it my own, and then I will be much happier with it. So I started playing with it. I came up with my own. Oh, I want to play with that some more. Um, I made notes. I did a letter, which was kind of a copy of his, but his was wider. Mine's kind of narrow. I didn't like it so much. Played with some of his little, let me get this up closer. Some of his little serifs where they go off on the wiggly lines. And just playing with this. Now this one, I just think the way I draw it, draw it is very rigid, but I can see playing with that, doing my own thing, I could get that much freer looking and not so rigid. There's that T that's so interesting. This was a Q, kind of looks like a G. I need to play with that one. And here's just some more letters. And then this is a friend of a pen pal of mine. I started sketching her name out for an envelope and then I just tried experimented with color. And so this is my first experiment. I did a um, ligature. I didn't actually, well, I did do that on the envelope. I like that. I also had originally the eye ligatured onto that. I had the eye touching that stem. I thought that's too much. I mean, she would know it's her name, but nobody, it really, wouldn't read as her name. So um, what I just realized is I missed the accent on her name. I'll have to add that in. And so then I did an envelope and this is going to her. And it's all, I did it all in one color or it's red and yellow. She likes, uh, uses a lot of oranges and it the color doesn't show up perfectly here, but it is kind of a, uh, it's kind of brownish because I colored these in with graphite. And if any of you have taken the class with Amity Parks, she studied a lot in Bruges and Peter talks, teaches a lot in Bruges. And I noticed he's got these same letters. So, you know, I don't know who came up with it first, but I, I wouldn't be surprised if they influence each other also. But I did these letters, I colored them in, and I think next time I would paint it first and then maybe darken the edges with colored pencil or darker watercolor. So these are my experience, uh, experiments, but I'm having so much fun with that. And I know my friend, her name's Maylee, I know she's going to enjoy receiving this in the mail. She's not a calligrapher but she's kind of artistic and she'll appreciate the effort. And really this M, I made a narrower M. It could, I, I could see this again next time as a wider M. That's the one I chose to do, but I think it'd be fun with contrast. So just playing around. So for tonight, what I'd really like to do is all of you take those handouts that you've got and any ideas you saw and and start playing around do some quick thumbnail sketches let's see and so play around for 15 minutes and then we're going to just start a quick little project the envelope project i'll walk through that but any uh i see there's chat let me um get on chat and I'll do some sketching while we're all here. Okay, it looks like everything's been answered. So go ahead and feel free to speak up at any point, make comments, suggestions. And also I did these on a sketchbook, but now I'm going to sketch on, because when I transferred that, when I did this in an envelope, I kind of traced and adjusted, but then they weren't even. My, when I did my sketchbook, her first name was shorter than her last name. So I'm gonna do it on graph paper now, but you could just draw lines on blank paper, but I'm gonna play around on graph paper so they're, I want them to bounce. It's okay if some letters are shorter, but I don't want one word to be one height 
and the other to be another height, then I kind of want to go for even spacing too. But this is just a sketch and then you can adjust it later. So go ahead, play with those. I think my next envelope I addressed will just have fancy initial letters and I'll write the name in in smaller, playful, bouncy caps. So let's just spend a few minutes working on these. And using our handouts as our inspiration. And you know what? I think if I'm going to leave some of these letters on the screen. I think I'll leave one from the presentation on the screen. Let's see, do I have that still open? So let me turn off this camera for the moment. And I'm looking for my my video again. Okay, and then I'll share the screen. I'm gonna get his, the one that had a whole alphabet on it. Oh, and you know what? This, when I went through this, it kind of looks like it skipped some of these things. So I'm gonna see if we can go back and I'll just stop it on those. So here's some letters you can play with. I'll leave them up there where you can see them. And if anybody wants to see any other particular screens uh, that you saw in the slideshow, please let me know. And keep in mind, if you have a letter, it may not be exactly the same, but you can look at a different letter and get ideas for the letter you're working on. For example, I'm doing an L now, and I'm just looking at one of these other letters, and I'm just going to get the ideas from that.
So we'll go to about uh, nine more minutes of sketching letters or eight more minutes. About 7.40 Pacific time, we'll start working on a quickie. I'll just get you started on a project.
So how's everyone doing? Good, very good. Yeah, good. Okay, let's see, I'm looking for my piece of paper I had here. I get everything ready and then I have so many things here they they get buried. Okay, uh, oh, I lost my video. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and get my camera set up again. So I have my paper towels for padding and I don't really need them for what we're doing now, but I had them earlier, I will want them for scoring the envelopes. So I cut, I cut out an envelope, but I'll also walk through it. Let's see. So I've got all kinds of patterns for envelopes, just paper patterns that cardstock that I trace around. And one I have that I like is it's a Fiskars template. And if you have their scoring thing, you just run it around the inside and it cuts. I mean, there's a cutter and there's a score, but I'm not gonna use that. I'm just gonna trace and then cut it out. So that's what I did with this one, but I'm gonna do one right now. I'm just gonna put this on here. Uh, I have a better pencil somewhere, but I'm just gonna grab what I've got do a really light pencil line. Okay, and then I have, it comes with the scoring template too. And you can use a um, stylus from uh, stencilings, or I'm just gonna use a bone folder. And that's why I like this padding on here now, um, just it'll do a better job of a deeper score. And this will be just the fold lines. And the thing I like to do is this is where you put the glue. I just, uh, it's a personal thing, it's not really necessary, but I like to put a real light pencil line to just show me where I'm going to put the glue. And I'm not going to take the time to cut it out right now, but I use a paper cutter on the square edges so they'll be neat. And then I uh, cut the corners, etc., with scissors. I could, as I said, if I, I could use a Fiskars cutter, whatever you want to use. And if you were, I sent a paper pattern and you could always use that one. So, and you know, if you have a purchased envelope with good paper, that's great too. Anything in the chat, Wendy, any questions that sh should be answered? I'm going to, uh, do the addressing right now. Just some thank yous to you and Sharon. Okay. All right. So I marked this, I wrote top on, on here and I'm just gonna uh, address it first. And I'm not really gonna do a whole thing because I'm not totally thrilled with my letters. I've got a light box. If you don't have a light box and you're happy with your letters, you can put soft pencil on the back and trace it and that'll come through on your paper. I'm gonna do, and what I did all these thumbnails, let me hold them up so you can see them better. And I'm improving them. I'm doing them over and over and improving them. So I'm gonna send this to a friend and 
I, I am fairly happy with those top letters as those are just sketches. I need to do them neater. And that's where I might say, let me just throw in here that when I did my page of thumbnails, I did some with pen, felt pen. I decided I liked the pencil better, but that's for you to experiment. I also did on the envelope I did here, I used a sepia colored micron. And I just happened to have a size one here, but really I would have liked to have used a 0 0.005, a thinner, finer line, but that's not what I have. I have to put that on my shopping list and go buy it. But um, just that's play around, come up with what you like. But I, I've decided I like the pencil. So what I'll do, and then, so I played with it. I did the first one. I thought those don't, those aren't spread out far enough. They're just too cramped. And so I did another one. I also tried it with uh, just a quick sketch of how copper plate would look. I don't uh, really like that with these letters. And so on the bottom, I just drew some shapes. Those aren't the letters I would use, but I drew some shapes and I spread the small capitals out further. And I think I like them spread further much better than any of the other things I played with. But I'm gonna keep playing with this, but just for the sake of demoing, I'm going to just show what I do. So I would put this on a light box, or as I said, you can um, put graphite on the back. And I need to figure out where, how much room is my address gonna take? And so I could just hold this one up and hopefully tomorrow I'll have time and I'll run to the, art store and get a finer line to do these letters. Or I have this in black. I have a 005 in black. Maybe I'll just do the letters in black. But I want to make sure, usually you need 5 eighths of an inch at the bottom of an envelope for the postal to put their marks. And then here's my address. So I would want the name to be just about here and I've got to figure out about how tall I want it and here here are the letters so I how much, did, how, how much did you say to leave blank at the bottom of the envelope five eighths okay. five eighths okay and then I and you know if you don't do it they'll put that sticker over it repositionable sticker and put the barcode sometimes they can get by without it but their guidelines from the post office are leave five eighths of an inch blank and they'll go through their machine more easily. I played around, <laughs> that's way too short. The second line's way too short, but I wasn't trying to be accurate. I like them taller. And in fact, I think I'd like them taller than my, the ones I like more. So I'm going to mark the line. So I marked a line based on my other letters, but I'm gonna I'm gonna make it this tall. And when I say I'm making it this tall, that's not including the serifs. I want the serifs to go past. And I am gonna move this over to the left because I want room for a stamp and I'm getting pretty close to the top on this one. And I want tall envelopes or tall, sorry, tall uh, letters. And I gotta make sure I don't get too far to the left because there's the flap that's gonna be folded. So I've got it marked and there it is. So I am going to play around and just come up with a taller letter. I'm gonna pencil it lightly because I can always erase. Okay. 
And I'm not going to do the graphite like I did on the other one that I thought was, it just muddied up the watercolor. I'm just going to watercolor in here and then I'll darken it after. So here's my diamond and my decorative lines, similar to what Peter does. I really like those. And it should be open at the bottom. I do have a smaller eraser too, one of those real mini ones, but it's buried on my table. I'm not gonna bother to get it. And then here, just this. And the one thing I wanna point out is Peter's using press and release guidelines. So let me turn this off so you can see it better. It's he darkens where if you were doing press and release, the ends of the letter would be darker and he darkens in the corners. So as I said, I don't really wanna do graphite. I wanna paint, but I'm gonna do it to show you. When you're doing it with watercolor, you want to have dark where press and release would be. And in the middle, lighter, and then darker. And the press and release, the, the dark is indicating fatter parts on the strokes. And many of you were here for our press and release lesson that we had before. We'll review this in future, but just for those who have, know what press and release is, he darkens at the ends and he does these little balls on the ends, which some versals have those. So that's what I'm doing. Okay, so there's that, but I wanna then move it over far enough because I want it to be far apart, like the bottom one is. So when I do my O, Maybe I'll just measure. And then I will put that amount of space in between. And that's two inches. So I'm gonna put two inches in between and I'll put the O over here. And I don't have to worry about it getting in the way of the stamp too much because the letters, the rest of the name will be real short. Okay, so I don't want to take too much time here because I want to give time for show and share before we finish, but I just want to show you the process here. And you can play around with this, do thumbnails, and just play around with the thumbnails till you're happy with something. And then do it on an envelope. And I did this on, so my first one, I did it on some paper I've got, which I thought I had Gilbert Bond. Let me turn this off. I thought I had Gilbert Bond, but it's got some other watermark on. And so the first paper I did the envelope on, I don't know what it is, but I didn't put much water on there. so it. It didn't wrinkle, it does just fine, it took that. But this paper, I did think it was Gilbert Bond, but I, it's not, it bleeds. And Gilbert Bond is not supposed to bleed. For the second envelope, I'm using a drawing paper that I've got just, uh, and I, I had showed this uh, in Annie uh, Lawrence's class. It takes some water. It sometimes bleeds, but for what we're doing here, drawing letters and a little bit of watercolor, it works fine. When I really get a name I'm thrilled with, I'll do an envelope in Archie's text wove. So this is up to you what paper you use, but you want something that'll take some water. And when I did my O here, um, it's that O is too short. I'm gonna redraw that. So I, I was rushing here and did not 
fix that. But that's basically the process. You want to play around with those envelopes and uh, play around with them. Draw what you want. It's a, just get close. You can always adjust on the envelope, but get close to what you want on your sketches. I'm not quite there yet, but I will do some more. And then I'm going to finish up this envelope and send it out tomorrow. So questions before we, I'd like to give a little time to share what you did in class. Some people may want to show what they've got, but do we have any questions before we do that? I'm going to go to, I'm going to take off spotlight and go to gallery view on mine. Okay, so it doesn't seem like we have any questions, but I will, um, I'll mention that I will be sending out the recording. It takes a while to process, but then when it's done, I will also repeat where you can find samples of Peter's work. I do find it very inspiring and it's a lot of fun to play with. Uh, anybody wanna share what they've done? Susan, are you holding up to share? Or are you just looking at something? Okay, Joyce. Uh, no, I was looking at a letter that okay. I was did quickly. Joyce um, is um let me Joyce is ready to share. So let me do that. And then I'll go to Margaret and to Susan. Susan. Okay, so Joyce, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> oh. That'll be a fun, fun letter. So so I'm looking at Joyce's and those are really a different style, but she's taking the decorating and all of that. It's a more kind of almost a cursive and any of this stuff we learn, we can apply to anything. And now some of those letters, they do look a lot like Peter's letters. You've just made them your own. I hope so. <laughs> great. Any other comments that you have to make on it? They're great. Um, I, I found I thought I was using a waterproof uh, Pigma Micron, but when I used the watercolor, it did run. So I don't know if they've changed the uh, formulation or not. Well, if you were sure you were using a Pigma, maybe it wasn't quite dry yet. Oh, maybe it's possible. I know you're in Arizona. It ought to be dry by now. <laughs> okay, let me put Margaret up. <laughs> but you know, I'm just thinking it does. If it's not dry, it's going to run. Okay. Oh, wow. You have a lot of fun. You, you wow. got a lot done quickly. Yeah. So, I was just playing. I didn't try to do a word or anything. I was just doing some letters. Yeah. Wow. I kind of love cool. this B. I think the B yeah. turned out really cool. <laughs> yeah. You've got That's some very, uh, very nice ones there. Thanks. Some of them are pretty much copies, but you know, you have to have to copy a bit before you can but like that D with the curves through it, the shape is different than his. So, mm -hmm. so you're, you are, you know, even if you're trying to copy, when we start, we're not exactly the same all the time. And then we come up with our own yeah. versions. Thank wow. you. These are really fun. So Susan, did you did you have something to share? Okay, let me do Susan. Well, I, I just I just did something that's oh, just wow. funky with lines, and it's sort of Sherry Kiesel, um, yeah, inspired. And, yeah. But I don't know. I might color it in. I just might leave it just as linear, and that's oh, it. Great. That's the D. <laughs> I, I think that would be wonderful with color. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's it's a little booklet I'm sending off for a exchange so yeah i think you know what right. you could do you could photocopy that before you color it i know and i know you know about doing that so <laughs> oh yeah i've learned that from that okay that's a good idea thank you christy for that suggestion <laughs> Any, anybody else have anything they want to share i have a quick question um the photocopy thing is that so you can try out different colors to see which one you like the best before oh, doing you know. it original the reason I mentioned it was Susan. She wasn't sure if she'd leave it the same or color it. But also, Susan's our birthday card contest winner. And she did it in black and white. And then she painted it in. And then when I told her she won, she said, just a minute, I want to change. I want to fix something on there. And she had a black and white copy. And she was able to fix it. So that's why I 
what made yeah. me think of no, it. No, but it's a, it was a good way to work, right? Because then, yeah. you know, it just made an adjustment. Yeah, because so. you wouldn't have wanted to have to redo that whole card. That <laughs> <laughs> no, was good. So, yeah. No, I think everybody, if you're doing that with Peter, is like, Margaret, your work tonight, you could just outline that and then begin to play with it even more and add your Zentangle textures in it. I think they would be pretty good as well, too. Yeah, that's um, a great, a great suggestion. Where's everybody else here tonight? <laughs> One letter? <laughs> well, not everybody wants to share, but does okay. anybody? Okay, Anne, Anne Bystrom. Just I have this. Um, right. These are just, um, let's see. Mm. So you're going to town. You got a lot done, too. Yeah, I was just actually doing with a pencil and doing uh, on the graph paper. So yeah. um, these are some of my favorites of his that I, I did. And I'd like to be able to maybe take off on some uh, other ideas. Yeah, it's great. To, you're making your own little library of letters. So that's that's a great suggestion. Right, too. right. Thank you for that. I think I saw Margaret. Too. Thank you. I'm, I'm going to do Margaret here. Oh, no. I'll get rid yeah. of the blur. Yes. From down under. <laughs> oh. Um, so you you did the M. Oh, and you're you're doing a, a K. You know, I have to laugh at those K's. They remind me of little bug antennas. And it's not, I mean, I saw that on some of Peter's. <laughs> well, I, I've got 25 envelopes to address for the society. So I thought oh, I may as well just do that on there and then that does the job you know <laughs> you'll get a lot of practice there <laughs> yeah so margaret you outlined your letters first like got your shapes and then you just filled in with marker or whatever or a pencil just a minute let me spotlight again oh she's got a whole sketch yeah. one. Oh, can you lower that down it's off the screen all that right it's fun very so, uh, I'm just adding these to my pages. Yeah, those are yeah. fun. So I, I like I love the idea because you're doing what Anne's doing where she uh, starting a library. I love that. I got to do that. <laughs> I'm going to copy that idea. Okay, I, think <laughs> I saw somebody else was holding something up. Okay, Deb, just a minute. Okay, Deb's got hers outlined. Ooh. Great. Thank you. You've got some oh, that look a little, little different too. Thank you for sharing. Anybody else want to share? Well, so what I'd like, I, oh wait, Marsha, Marsha, just a minute. Marsha, okay, field. Okay. You're oh. muted, Marsha. <laughs> I'm muted. <laughs> I'm a newbie, <laughs> so that's my. And you've already colored yours in. Yeah, my attempt. Yeah, great, great start. That really stinks. You can't even tell that it's an S. But anyway, it's a start. Yeah, but that's, yeah. I wasn't happy with a lot of my letters, but you know what? I felt I was on the, in progress. Right. Okay, is there anybody else that's got wants to share? Now, so what I'd love to say is if you play with this over the next few days, feel free to send samples in. We'll we can put them in our newsletter. We it just goes to the San Diego uh, members. Uh, if you're okay with it, we can put them on Instagram. And if you're shy, we don't have to use your name, but it's very inspirational for everyone to, you know, even just see your sketches. You just say these are sketches and you don't have to worry about them being perfect. So the email. feel free to send any pictures to me and we'll make sure they get on. What is the email address? Oh, send? sorry. Uh, you know what? I'll send it when I send the recording. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. So, and so thank you all for coming. It's it's a couple minutes after eight, so I'll let you all go. And thanks very much for joining us. Thank you. And we hope to see you at, at some of the upcoming things.
Thank you, Christine. Thank, Thank, Thank you. Thank you for having me. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Take care, Bye. Margaret. It was Bye, really Shirley. fun. Thank you. <laughs>